All right, hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Jemaine Miller, uh, Miller Lifestyle Fitness. I finally was able to bring to you guys my full shoulder workout routine. Been saying I was gonna do it for a while, so here it is. <clears throat> so before I got started here, my first warm-up set, I, of course, did my ab routine. Warm up the uh, anterior, anterior lateral and posterior head of my delts with some front raises lateral raises and rear flies I guess you can say so here we have my first set I just knocked out here's my second set first set for me is basically to get that mild muscle connection as always make sure my form is down and this is my second set right here I'm always pyramiding up to my um, working sets as you guys notice I'm using resistance bands you know what the resistance band does is give you tension throughout the entire movement so on the concentric movement which is the movement going up there's resistance from the start all the way to the contraction or the isometric movement and there is tension going down on the eccentric movement so that fully works that full muscle curve and I enjoy doing it, especially when I don't have a spotter most of the time to do negatives or pause rips and stuff like that. So this really, really, really helps to fully, fully exhaust my muscle. Right here we have my um, last working set. I did one more set prior to this. I think I was able to knock out five or six reps where I wanted to do a little bit more so I requested a spot. Once again, keeping my form good, as you can see. And the spot is always just there for to give you that confidence and this core, of course for safety. Right there, I think it was about 165. And with the band, it feels like 225, maybe even more. And lastly, we have my drop set. Like I said, don't really use a spotter much, so I'm not doing negatives. So in order for me to, I guess, fully exhaust the muscle, pump blood into the muscle fibers, I like to do drop sets. And with my drop sets, as you can see, I do a little um, pause rep scheme in a sense where I would take a few seconds break and jump right into that set. So that was, I think it was about five reps. And then I did it again. And then I paused again once more, and of course I knocked out five more reps. First work, first workout of my shoulder routine. Shoulder presses. Got to get those big compound movements in early. I prefer to do them, but I always make sure that I warm up my delts, my chest, and my 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 back as well. Basically, a full upper body warm up before I go into any upper body workouts. All right, right here we have my shoulder press to the rear. A lot of people hate using the doing this movement because it compromises their um, their shoulders. So after such a strenuous um, front press workout, I decided to keep the weight low because I'm using a resistance band. I'm going to feel it regardless. So once again, like I said, I pyramid up my working sets, and all I did was add 10 pounds. So the first set was the bar, the second set was 10 pounds, third set was 10 pounds, and my last set I added just a quarter for 25 pounds. And all I'm doing here is just, once again, working that rear delt muscle. You do feel a little bit in your um, upper traps, and I'm making sure I'm staying safe and not compromising my shoulders at any time at all. 
key to keeping my rotator cuff muscles, um, rotator cuff safe as well. Shoulder injury is one of those injuries that will just keep you out for months and that's not what I want. But I do think this is an exercise that needs to be done. Just do it safely. Don't overdo it with the weight. It helps develop that thickness in your rear deltoids. You can do rear flies, but those compound movements helps the thick um, those uh, those thick muscles that you need. This is my last set right here. Then lastly, moving on to my drop set. This time I just did one drop and I just decided to do a full burnout of the bar itself. I'm a loner in the gym. I don't really use or have training partners, but I'm telling you, a training partner is where you get all your gains. That person, if he knows what he's doing, he's gonna push you. And you can do as many things as you want. So many different training schemes. Like I said, drop sets, pyramid sets, negatives, pause reps. There's so many things you can do with a training partner that you can't do when you're training alone because it's basically the safety and the assistance. So I did my front shoulder press, rear delt presses, and now I'm doing a unilateral movements, or basically unilateral dumbbell presses. Start off with 50 pounds. Now my reason for doing this because I feel that on each side of your your body there's going to be instabilities. One side is going to be stronger than the other. So I personally feel that the left side of my body is the weakest portion of my body. So as you can see, I would usually start off on the left side. And then on the right side, I would match that amount of reps as I go on. Just to weed out those imperfections, make sure I have full symmetry on both sides of my, my, my physique. What this also does is help you to stabilize your core. So believe it or not, my core muscles are really being used right here. I can feel my abs tightening up, especially because I did abs earlier. I can feel the contraction in my, my core as I'm doing these unilateral movements for my shoulder presses. So for you individuals that always have issues saying, hey, well, you know, how do you get your left tricep to, to get bigger or your left bicep to get bigger? Well, this is what you do. Because whenever you do those compound movements and you do bench presses and stuff like that with both hands, believe it or not, there's always that stronger hand that compensates for that weaker side of your body. Especially if you notice whenever you're locking out on a bench press, you realize that your right side may lock out faster or your left side may lock out, you know, faster. It just all depends. So stuff like this helps to um, ensure that both sides are equal in strength and hopefully in size as your muscles grow. my last working set right here I can only do six but like I said started out on the left side and I match what I do on my weak side to my right side I think I did six on the right when you're tired and exhausted it's, it's pretty difficult to count I'm not gonna lie
right here we do have side lateral raises so after like I said do my compound movements I go into my isolation movements to isolate each head of my deltoids so this is the lateral head which is the side now for individuals that don't know how to do lateral raises my advice is and I've seen it before I've heard people say it before the concept you want to go with is like you're pouring um, a teacup with your hand so if your thumb is going to be down your pinky is going to be up if you notice what I'm doing you're not so much focusing on your forearm at all so you want to keep your elbows high pour that teacup as you can see I'm doing that on both sides So once again, if you notice, regardless of how high I go up in weight, I'm ensuring my forearm is bent a little bit and focusing on my humerus bone, keeping that elbow high and pouring that teacup. That's all I'm doing. decided to do here on my final set is use my resistance bands like I said before I don't have a training partner and usually what I would do with a training partner is after my very last set my trainer partner would put his hands right on my humerus or right by my elbows and I would press up as hard as I can and then I would come down and what my training partner would do is try to prevent me from you know coming down slowly so I would abduct mean and go up and then I would abduct mean and go down and that's all your training partner is doing as you go up he's pressing down and as you come down he's holding you so you can move so it's basically like a negative in the sense when you're coming down and that's what I'm trying to do here fully fully exhaust that muscle If your gym has resistance bands, do not do not be afraid to use them. Try to manipulate the machines that you have. If it's hammer strength, life fitness machines, do not be afraid to use resistance bands. Do not be afraid to use the chains. These things are made for a reason. So go ahead, give them a try, but be sure to ask a trainer if you see a trainer or anyone with experience on how to do them or use them safely. Right here we have my um, front raises, basically anterior deltoid raises. Now if you notice, what I'm doing is I'm kind of twisting my hand or my arms in. A lot of people don't realize it, but your front delts are, are basically attached to your, your pecs, in a sense. And that's why when a lot of people do 
um, you know, inclined person and stuff like that, you know, they feel a lot of soreness in their, in their, in their front dev towards. So, that upper area, that clavicular head of your pectoral is connected to your, your anterior deltoid. So, in me doing this, with that twisting in motion, I'm still working that upper clavicular area of my, my pec, which is the where your clavicle sits, that upper area. I'm working that area along with my front deltoid. So usually I won't do a lot of front delt workouts on shoulder day, but today I was really feeling it, and not only that, but I wanted to share this information with you guys, if you guys didn't know it already. And I did do the same thing with the resistance bands for my front delts, but I just was unable to record it. Here I'm doing um, posterior deltoid flies. And what I see a lot of people do on this machine is they flex their arms all the way to the rear, which I think is uh, is not safe. It compromises your, your shoulder. All you need to go is just as far as basically what you see me doing right here once you go to the point where it's going way behind your back and your weight you're really doing too much this is made to work your rear delts your rhomboids your upper and mid traps and the same concept with keeping that elbow high really puts emphasis on your rear delts and rhomboids if you haven't noticed I can try to keep my elbows high and the emphasis goes on to my rhomboids and rear delts. If you put your elbows low, then you're gonna put a lot, a lot of emphasis on your mid, mid traps. I wanna say I did four or five sets. I really don't count sets, guys, I really don't. What I do is, try to keep my rep range above six six or eight reps and those reps I feel is where I would reach hypertrophy or of course muscle growth and just keep try to keep them above six 12 13 or 14 at least especially when I'm really trying to push out that last seventh eight or ninth set with great form then I really feel that's where I'm gonna get that muscle growth Anything I feel below one to five reps, I feel that's just the strength. Over time, of course, you're gonna grow, but I feel that's just the strength. Right here, we have face pulls. I only did about four sets of these. What you can, with the rope, what you can see is my first couple sets, I'm pulling it straight into my chest. So I'm really hitting my mid trap and my rhomboids. And then after my, few more reps I really pull it higher to my face and as you can see I'm activating my upper trap and my rear delts I remember back in 2010 I had when I was in the Air Force I saw a guy doing these standing up and standing up is you do you can accomplish the same thing but you basically stabilize your core doing it standing up you can see right here the emphasis on my mid traps and rhomboids and then watch me activate my upper traps there you go and rear delts when I pull it all the way higher to my face but back to the story I saw a guy doing it and I just named him Paul Bunyan's because he was a big huge white guy that looked like Paul Bunyan I think I did about four sets of those nothing major this was my last rear delt workout. It it looks like rear delt flies, and it has a little look of dumbbell rows. But if anyone knows Sadiq Hadzovic, he is a Olympia for classic physique. I stole this from him on his YouTube channel, and it's basically a cross from rear delt flies and dumbbell rows what you want to do is as you can see bring your elbow out 
and this really focuses on your rear delts and once again your mid trap notice I did about three three exercises on my rear delts I really enjoy working my rear delts a lot so that's one muscle I really think people fail to focus on right here we have shrugs starting off with 135 just straight up and down nothing special same thing with dumbbells if you do it with dumbbells straight up and down a lot of individuals rotate their shoulders frontwards or backwards and that does nothing for you the cartilage inside your and the cartilage inside your rotator cuff grinds and that's the last thing you want to do is tear something in there so you just want to go straight up and down straight up and down and you accomplish the same thing but better it's my second set right here my third set of 315 and I think I worked up to 405 the first two sets that you notice I really got that good one or one and a half two second squeeze at the top unfortunately as the weight goes up I do you know use a lot more momentum or a little bit of momentum but still try to get that squeeze at the top then I conducted a drop set of about 65% maybe so 4 or 5 to 225 that's roughly about 60-65% like I said the reason I'm doing drop sets opposed to negatives or other stuff is because I don't have a training partner. I love and I do enjoy drop sets though because I think I'm flushing so much muscle into those muscle fibers. So much blood. And then I did one more drop from 225 to 135. I guess this is what you can call my finisher to my shoulder workout. I bust my ass throughout the entire workout, so I don't consider anything a finisher. With that being said, I, I like to finish on a positive and good note with every single workout that I do. I like to make sure I leave the gym completely drained and tired. And all I'm doing right here is front and rear presses notice I'm just using the bar that's how tired my shoulders are I started off with compound movements try to build mass that's what we're trying to do build mass into those for our muscles and our shoulders went on to lots of isolation movements on each head the anterior which is the front the lateral which is the side and posterior which is the rear so compound movements isolation movements and then lastly after I've done so much pounding to my shoulders and I have those little micro tears in those muscle fibers what I'm doing right here is flushing and pumping as much blood as possible into those muscle fibers now the breaking down of muscle happens in the gym not growth 
So that's all I'm doing right here. Just breaking down as much as I can. Some may call it overtraining. I just enjoy being in the gym all day. If it's two hours, if it's three hours, then so be it. I'm going to overtrain. But what I'm doing right here, like I said before, is flushing as much blood as possible. And then the growth is going to happen when I intake that those protein, supplementation, carbs, and I just rest. That's when the growth is going to happen. So this is my shoulder routine. I did four sets of this right here and I was done. This is my full big bold shoulder routine. I always say that I'm, I don't take shoulders serious, but when I get into the gym and I just do my first working set for shoulders, something just clicks and I just go in. I, it's not my favorite body part to work out, but as you can see, I do what I do and I, I make it happen. Sorry it took so long to get you guys this routine in. I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you guys, it helps you guys. And if you have any questions, feel free to look me up. All my information is going to be at the uh, end of this video. My IG, my email, my, my Facebook, and my YouTube channel. Thanks for your support. More videos to come soon in the future. You guys take care. Bless.